We hold a global briefing annually um, where we bring together our friends, um, board members, um, with our field um, analysts to discuss political crisis and violent conflicts throughout the year. My name is Louise Arbour. I am the President and Chief Executive Officer of International Crisis Group. As I begin to highlight what I view as the shortcomings of existing frameworks for conflict prevention, I want to stress that some of it is actually working and that what is not working is fixable. So let me first turn to international criminal justice, which is now anchored, as you know, in a decade of work by the International Criminal Court. I don't think that we have yet resolved the inevitable tensions between peace and justice in a really workable fashion. Security Council referrals to the International Criminal Court, in my opinion, are very problematic. Two referrals by the Security Council to the ICC in the cases of Darfur and Libya, respectively, have done very little to enhance the standing and the credibility of the ICC, the International Criminal Court, let alone contribute to peace and reconciliation in their respective regions. Three permanent members of the Security Council are not party to the statute that created the court, and all five permanent members can, of course, use their veto to shelter themselves and their friends from this expansion of responsibility. I think a reduction in the use of the veto is certainly important among the permanent five members, but it's almost uh, as equally impossible as it is important. I know there has been a suggestion from f uh, the French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius that council members should restrain their use of vetoes. That would be a fair step. But the council has to be reformed. And if it does not reform, we will see more challenges and competition. Now let me turn to R2P, I think a doctrine that's very familiar uh, to most of you. Despite early attempts to focus on prevention by all means short of the use of force, in reality the debate over R2P has focused mostly on its sharp end, how to mobilize international support for using military force against a government unwilling or unable to protect its own people. It was designed to mitigate the harm to civilians caught in war. But in Libya, it was instrumentalized also to effect a change of regime. Now, whether this showed the potency of the doctrine or will lead to his demise is unclear. Since then, though, the doctrine has proved useless in mobilizing the international community to protect civilians in Syria. R2P is a new emerging norm, which I believe is going to make a difference. Uh, it has uh, raised questions the way it was applied in Libya uh, and it became an issue for me during my negotiations on Syria, particularly with the Russians and the Chinese who believed that the resolution morphed too quickly into regime change. And now we have a, a genuinely multipolar world, which is a, in many ways a good thing, but as a result, we don't really have the, the uh, power to enforce the rule of law in the world. Third, let me say a few things about peacekeeping, and let me give you some examples. The newly deployed so-called intervention brigades in the Democratic Republic of Congo the somewhat ambiguous environment in which the UN is deploying in Mali, and the latest calls by the UN Secretary General for more and more robust troops to take on al-Shabaab in Somalia, may herald a new era at the UN of peacemaking by warfare. The Security Council and none of the other international actors could come up with a viable solution, and so the regional solution was a brigade, essentially a military unit within the UN peacekeeping mission to fight on behalf of the government of the DRC and to put an end to the crisis in the Congo. Do keep in mind over the next two days 
that events um, each year expose new weaknesses and contradictions in the very doctrines and institutions, the tools we have for conflict management. To identify them is not to dismiss these tools altogether, but rather we should encourage further thinking on how to fine tune them and use them more wisely to advance peace and security. This is my second or third time uh, to participate in the global briefing. And my sense, it gets better every year. And I think that in we had a very interesting discussion, which from which I learned a lot. And and uh, the level of discussion uh, in confronting the uh, the issues that uh, of global governance, uh, I think, uh, is a very important contribution in hopefully actually uh, uh, improving uh, the, the, the situation.